The other day I was installing a NVMe SSD on my 2015 MacBook Pro and I noticed that the inside is pretty dirty. So how about we give this guy a little cleanup and of course all the tools which you need are linked in the description of the video. So for starters you do need a toolbox which will let you unscrew all the security special screws which apple has on this macbook then you need a brush over here to clean the dust inside your macbook make sure that the brush here is anti-static and then the other thing while we are cleaning it up let us go ahead and do a removal of the old thermal paste and put in some new thermal paste inside so the first thing you need to do is you need to take off the back here and you have 10 screws and I think you would need a 1.2 mm star screw so this is the one which you need 1.2 mm and this is the star one over here and do note that the two screws over here are of a different size so make sure that you keep them separate now once we have removed the screws the next thing you can lift the back off and as you can see we do have a lot of dust in here we have dust on the fans and this here is the cpu in case you have the 2015 macbook pro or the gpu you will have the gpu over here and the next thing i recommend you do is disconnect the battery over here so all you need to do is Peel this up a little and then use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery connector and again be gentle over here no need to be in any hurry patience is the key and there it is you can see that we have successfully disconnected the battery connector and the first thing we're going to do is use this brush over here to clean up the internals Next up, we need to clean this fan over here. So either you can use a air blower or you can just take it all out. First thing, remove this rubber piece over here and then you have three Torx T5 screws. One is over here, one is over here and the other one is over here. Make sure that you do not remove the small one, remove the big one. Again, they might be of different sizes, so keep them organized. Now once you've removed all the screws, you have to remove this connector over here. So use the tip of your spudger and lift this guy up gently. And then we should be good to remove this fan here from the motherboard. Again, be gentle, pull it out and bam, there it is. We have successfully removed this fan. Now in case you feel like opening this fan module even more, you have to remove these three screws over here which are four point screws and then this thing will pop open and you can give this a better clean using any brush but as you can see we also have some dust over here and some dust over here as well so that is what needs to be cleaned first of all so this here is the fan which we had just removed after doing just a normal cleanup without any air blower or anything like that just with my brush over here which is made from natural materials again make sure you are using an anti-static brush moving over to the other fan this one is a bit complicated so for starters you have to remove these four screws and then remove this cable now once you have removed the four screws you will have two metal trays which can be removed and make sure that you are organizing them carefully and then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to use a plastic spudger tool to pop up this connector there it is one side and then similarly with the other side be gentle and it just popped out and again remember the direction so organize these things pretty carefully next thing we need to do is we need to pop out these three connectors over here so again use your plastic spudger tool and be gentle and careful now with those three connectors removed you can then remove this rubber thing and then pull them back a little then we need to remove this cable over here so this i think is for your camera 
Now the trick to removing this camera cable is you push from each side gently and then eventually this thing is going to pop out. So again be gentle and the pro tip over here is to push parallel to the motherboard on each side. So you do it on one side first and then you do it on the other side and eventually this thing will slide out. And there it is you can see that we did slide it out now at this point you can pull this away from the fan if there is any glue just be a bit careful about the glue and in case you're wondering why did we have to do so well that is because one of the screws here is hidden underneath these cables so that is one of the screws which needs to be taken off for the fan but we are not done over here we have to remove this card as well because the connector for the fan is hidden beneath it and to remove this card all you need to do is use your torx t5 screwdriver unscrew this and then you can pull this out there it is you can see we have successfully removed the card again make sure that you are organizing your screws along with the parts now the next thing left to do is remove the three screws which will help us remove this fan so one is over here the other one is over here which was hidden underneath all those cables and then the third one is over here again make sure you organize these they are of different sizes now once we have removed the three screws holding this fan in place then we can lift up on this connector over here and then if you pull out the fan assembly you should be easily able to remove this fan as well from the motherboard bam here it is you can see that we do have some dust over here which we need to clean up and again if you want to open this fan to another level these here are the three screws which you need to open up to clean it even better and here it is these are the results after giving it a good cleaning definitely better than before next up let us move over to removing this heat sink over here and doing a repaste now to remove this heat sink or the cooling system you have one screw which is hidden over here you might have to remove this rubber washer then for me i do not have an external gpu so i have four screws for the cpu if you have a gpu over here you might have four screws for the gpu as well and then the other screw the last one is hidden over here right here is the last screw i'm not sure if the camera is able to focus on that but here is the last screw so once you have removed those then you should be able to pull out this heat sink or the cooling system again make sure you are organizing your screws now a pro tip over here is when you are removing the screws for your cpu and gpu do it in a star pattern so you unloosen or unscrew this one a little bit then you go on this one then you go on this one and then you go on this one we're doing this because we do not want any unnecessary pressure on one side of the cpu or the gpu so it is always advisable to do it in what is known as a star pattern for both the cpu and the gpu now once we've removed all the screws we should be able to remove this heating sink from our macbook again on this side you might have to wiggle it a little bit so just be gentle over here there it is it is now out and the next thing you need to do is you need to clean this leftover or dried out thermal paste and you need to do it from both the cpu and the heatsink over here and if you had the gpu you need to do that as well the best trick over here is to use a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol again be gentle and if you want you can also air blow out these fins over here if you see any dust inside these so here it is you can see that we have cleaned the heat sink with isopropyl alcohol and then we're going to do the same thing with the cpu over here and of course you can use some ear cleaning q-tips as well in case you want to just make sure that all the rubbing alcohol and isopropyl alcohol has evaporated 
properly before you put on the new thermal paste. Well, it looks like we did do a pretty good job over here. So again, give it a few minutes, just making sure that all the cleaning agent here has evaporated before we put on the new thermal paste. So here it is, this is the thermal paste which we are going to use. You can use any brand which you want to as long as the brand is good enough and it is known enough. Now, I am using two grams here. I think two grams will be fine for this. You don't necessarily have to use all the two grams. How much do you put? How much do you not put? I'm not going to get into that debate. Some people just put a dab and spread it over. Some people just put the dab and let the heat sink do its thing when you tighten it it's going to spread on its own so again all those things are a personal preference and there it is i am pretty sure i didn't even use one gram i think i used like 0.25 of a gram or maybe 0.3 of a gram but again i think this is good enough and then the next thing you need to do is either if you want to spread it using a plastic spurger you can do that if you want to let the heat sink do its work you can do that as well whatever floats your boat and then just repeat the steps which we did to reach this point in reverse order and you should be good to go.